uh, five, four, three, two, one. So how did you first come to meet Sammy LaBella? Sammy LaBella and I were neighbors, but I never met him at that time. He was around, he lived around 3rd Avenue, and I was on 2nd Avenue with kids. I did hear about him a great deal because he had an act called uh, The Newsboy. And his aunt that he lived with at the time was a fine singer, a Sophie Tucker type, big heavy set lady with a big voice. And I wanted desperately to see them because I heard so much about them. And I was just starting in show business, although I did have a couple of very good gigs. I worked with Jackie Gleason at one point and a couple of other names that were just starting out. Well, one of the gigs I got was a little nightclub. I think it was the Bronx of Brooklyn, I can't remember. Anyway, the uh, MC happened to be Sammy LaBella. And I knew of him as the newsboy and I was thrilled that he was the MC. But when I saw him, I was shocked. I didn't, I never saw an MC like, like him. He was wild. He ran around like a lunatic saying off-color things and jumped on tables and I said, that's my MC? I don't believe it. Anyway, uh, I, I, I wanted to walk out, to be honest with you, because I, I was very sedate, I was very serious about my profession, but this was a lunatic. Anyway, I decided I needed the money, so I stayed. When he got up to MC, it was a different person. He spoke beautifully. He, he announced me beautifully, even though he never said two words to me. But he really did me justice. I got up and I did my show. And when he did his act, he went back to being a lunatic, <laughs> saying all kinds of things, words that I didn't appreciate. Anyway, he was nuts. Uh, he never did get close to me. I don't know, he kind of shied away from me, but my mother traveled with me. I was a kid, and my mother traveled with me every place. He got close to my mother. He used to sit and talk for the longest time with her about his aunt that was in show business like my mother was. My mother was a singer also. Um, my dad and mom were on the Yiddish stage. That's why I lived on 2nd Avenue. And I started on the Yiddish stage with, uh, with the Adlers. Stella Adler was my mentor as a kid. Anyway, after that, uh, we kind of got close, and I lost sight of him. He went to Europe, and he went with the USO after that, and I did too. But at the same time, but different places. We worked in Germany together, I didn't know that because he had changed his name by that time. He was already Skippy Low. He had changed his name. So I never knew where he was. I, I knew Sammy LaBella. He worked in Germany, France, the same time that I did, the same year, and England. And after that, um, after that, I moved out with my fifth husband. I moved out to California, and uh, we lived right across from the Hyatt Hotel on Sunset Boulevard. And I heard of a Skippy Low that does a show with, with different talent, a showcase. So I said, well, we have nothing to do to my husband. Let's go over and see what's going on there. When I walked in and I saw him, I said, gee, that looks familiar to me, but the name is different. So I asked to sing, and when I got up to sing, he recognized me. And I was shocked. I said, what happened to your name? He said, well, obviously I changed it. Well, I was then a fan of his, and I kept going to all his showcases and he really enjoyed me. I mean, I'm older than he was. 
I, I don't know if the age sounds different. He might have been, might have cut his age a little bit. I, I don't know. But anyway, that's how I met Sammy LaBella, knee skippy low. Now, where in New York, what were those places like and what was part of Skippy's act? He, as nutty as he was, when he opened his mouth to sing, I was shocked. He really sang up a storm. He was wonderful. Why did he have to do those crazy shtick? I didn't understand that. He was talented. He danced very professionally and sang beautifully. And so I never understood who the hell knew what gay was. I mean, I didn't know. For, I was a Jewish girl from the Lower East Side of New York. Who knew gay? Then, of course, uh, after my fifth husband, I learned what gay was. And when, <laughs> when I saw him as Skippy Lowe, I realized what was happening at the very beginning when I first met him. I realized why he was so nutty. But he was lovable and funny and intelligent and uh, weird. So he was weird from the beginning? Yes. Oh, did, yes. Did, did his weirdness get more exaggerated the older he got, or was he always that way? It got less, believe it or not. He got more mature, and while he was still gay, he curbed it a little bit. Uh, at the end, he was a gentleman. I mean, you never heard a dirty word out of him. He acted like a, a mature statesman. That's true. He really did. He cleaned up his act. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you you can tell the difference when is before his performance, and then when he turned it on for a performance. Was there? There's a switch that went off in Skippy. Absolutely, like turning a channel from being wild uh, and running around from person to person and screaming, he became a gentleman when he announced me. I couldn't believe the difference in one person. It was a shock to me. And when he sang, it knocked me off my chair. Wow, I've never heard Skip sing. I'm gonna have to find some footage where he's singing and dancing. I never heard that before. Yes, he danced, tapped, he danced beautifully and was very graceful, very graceful. Listen, he was gay for no reason, you know. For, for, I mean, a lot of reasons. Wow. Um, now, did you see him with any uh, man friends? He was in love. He, he met a German guy in Germany, very handsome, and he lived with him there and lived with him throughout Europe. He, the German fellow traveled with him wherever he went through Europe. But when Skippy had to come back home, he dumped him. And so, uh, I mean, he never was in want for a lover. He had many love affairs here. and. Uh, Actually, he did fall in love with an actress. I'll try and think of her name. And she was the only female that he ever truly loved. Wow. And they lived together for a long time. She was very wealthy. And Skippy liked that <laughs> very much. Uh, after that, she wanted to get married. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. She wanted to get married, and marriage to him was out of the question. No, sir. No marriage. So they had a split up, and he went back to his males after that. Um, I saw him with different men going home, you know, after his shows. So I, I don't know whether he had one single lover or if he had many. Um, he always had someone drive him and take him home. Did you ever hear about, uh, so uh, let me just see the span of time that you spent with him. How many years was that? 
after it when he became Skippy Low? Just since you knew him from the beginning. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. I think. Let's see. Eighteen twenty-eight. Maybe sixty years. Oh my God! You knew Skippy for sixty years. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's incredible. But like I say, I lost track of him for a long time when he became Skippy Low. How many years did you know him as uh, Sammy LaBella? Probably about five. Five years. And those are some, what, what year was that, would you say, roughly? The 40s? As Skip, as... Uh, Sammy LaBella. What year was it? So it was the war years, so, so the 40s? Probably early 40s, something like that. Yeah. Um, now the nightclubs that you were playing at, were they some interesting nightclubs? I never worked a gay club. And the club that I worked with with, Sam, uh, with Sammy was a very legitimate club. So it was surprising because he had worked all gay clubs, a lot of gay clubs, and uh, burlesque, which I worked too. I wasn't a stripper, but they used to have shows in between, and I did the show in between. So. Um, I don't know. He, it, I think it might have been the first legitimate club that he worked. Did you ever go to a club and see Skip uh, at one of the uh, gay clubs? Did you ever watch him at a gay club? No, I, I had no reason to go to a gay club. Right. I thought maybe he'd invite you or something. Um, no. uh, so when you reunited with Skip, you became his his like a regular in what his regular troop friend. He was very very nice to me. Anything that he had to do, he went to Palm Springs for somebody's birthday party. He invited me, and we we were very like good friends. You got into his circle of friends. Yes. You're in his circle. Yes. What? What? Who was? Who was Sammy LaBella, do you think, underneath it all? And what was he to people like you? He was a lost soul. He never found what he wanted, what he needed. So his whole life was his profession. He was Mr. Showbiz. And he loved what he did. But there was something missing. I, There was a true love. I think... Basically, he might have wanted a family. He might have wanted to be married and have children. But he was too rambunctious to settle down. He wouldn't do it. He loved the life he was living, but there was something missing. Yeah, I got the same thing. Yeah. I, I recognize that. What was he to people like you? A, f a dear friend. Just a friend. And, uh, of course, we had showbiz in, co in common because I started the same time that he did, very young. I was raised on the Jewish stage, like I said before, and uh, so that's all I knew. I was married five times, but I, n I never gave up singing. Did you and him ever play the Catskills? I was raised in the Catskills. I did more work in the Catskills than anybody I know. I, I mean, I had to be 16 when I had my first gig for the whole summer. At that time, it was for the summer that you worked, you know? I worked with Jerry Lewis and, at Brown's. I worked with Danny Kay at, I can't think of the name right now, but another hotel. And Danny Kay got a call from one of the studios to come out to Hollywood. So he left in the middle of the summer and Red Buttons took his place. So I worked with Red Buttons and Danny Kay. I worked with every comic that you can mention 
in the Catskills. Wow. And for years and years, and I got, what did I get? I think I got a a hundred dollars for the summer. The first gig at the Con uh, was in the Concord, White Roll Lake. Yeah. Wow. Did you ever hear of a place called Slippery Rock? There's a place in the Catskills. It was called Slippery Rock. Name rings yeah. a bell, but I don't exactly. Yeah, it was a small place. Um, okay. Uh, what were some of the biggest shows and biggest people that came or were part of? Who was who made up Skippy Lowe's troupe? Who was in that showcase? What kind of people? What names? And well, pe a couple of names came. Um, or how about people that got discovered or worked their way out of the Skippy Lowe? Uh, a group and into stardom. I I wouldn't know that. I just interviewed somebody yesterday, and there was Robin Williams. Robin was already getting up there, uh, but he was a very good-natured guy, and he he did stuff for Skippy. Yeah, Robin Williams. How did Robin Williams get along with uh, with uh, Skippy? Well, I'm sure they got along very well because Skippy was beholden to him for doing his show. And Robin was a very sweet, good-natured guy. So I'm sure they got along very well. Now, I understand that Jay Leno also did his show. Uh, but Jay at that time was just another comic in one of the, one of the uh, clubs. You know, he was just starting out, too. Now, my daughter-in-law was the director on Jay Leno's show for 17 years, so he was a very, very nice guy, really good. Yeah, well, there, there's a connection there then. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, where, where, uh, where did Skip stop performing? When he became Skippy Lowe, he no longer did an act? I think it started when he moved out to uh, California after New York and after traveling all over the world. He came out and that's when somebody suggested that he do it, you know, he do the showcase, because he used to interview people, as you know. And so he thought it would be a very good idea to do a showcase with different people and try to help them with their careers. Whether that was his main object, I don't know. I, he liked to be seen, and he loved emceeing. So I think that was the main reason. When he would do his shows, he liked close-ups like this. Not me. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to be. He interviewed me once and never again. I wouldn't do it. Right. You know, yeah. my age, I'm not going to have a close. I hope this is not a close. No, no okay. it's a wide shot. Thank you. Um, what uh, What's some of your fondest memories of working with Skip or, or things that you guys did together? Did you ever have fun off? Yeah, in Palm Springs, when he invited me to this party, I stayed overnight. And uh, at that time, after my fifth husband, I had a boyfriend. <laughs> And Skippy, you know, I had breakfast with my friend, and uh, he said, I have something for you. He said, I got it from Mary Astor. And he took out this beautiful emerald ring, and he said, uh, I want very little money for this. He said, I, if I were you, I would take it. It was very nice, but I couldn't ask my boyfriend to buy me a ring, and I couldn't afford it. So, uh, he kept egging me on, take it, take it, it's worth the money. I don't know where he got it from. But it, I said, no, Skippy, I'd love it, but I, I can't, I can't. He saw it on your finger. He wanted you to have it, I guess. Abs well, he needed the money, let's yeah. put it that way. Now, did you know about Skip's gambling? Yes. How did, how did that, how'd you come across that? He would talk about it, and I loved horses, too. 
I used to go to the races very often. And we would discuss it when I, when I had, a, you know, intimate conversations with them. He lost a lot of money gambling. What was his strategy, his gambling strategy? <laughs> From uh, a third guy, whatever he heard. Anything he heard, he would go for. It was it was reason to it was reason to drop some money on it. Yeah. Now, what was his relation with some of the someone someone like Shelley Winters? Same as mine, friends. Uh, never any intimate relations, and she was also very kind. And she tried to talk him into taking acting lessons with her, which she taught at the actor studio. But. Uh, Skippy had no patience to sit in a chair for more than five minutes, you know, so he couldn't. It was not for him. Somebody said that Skip was selling stories to the Esquire about Shelley Winters. I don't know about that. Yeah, who knows? One never knows. Uh, uh, now, did Skip ever find Skip depressed? He was always depressed. Even when, when he was funny, even when he ran around, he was depressed. So he lived yeah. in a world of kind of suffering. I think so, yeah. I think so. But as far as Shelley is concerned, you know, he would do anything for a buck. You know that. Right. <laughs> Skip. He was kind of the ultimate Pied Piper. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but what was it was so charming about Skip? There was something, some kind of charisma. He had something that you just wanted to like touch him. You wanted to be around Skip. There was something about him. I don't know what, what that was. I liked him. I mean, I just like when he showed up. It just the energy field was something just, I don't know if it was the court jester. He wanted a pinch of cheek. He was like a little elf. That's it. Like a, a like, a, like an imp. <laughs> an imp. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you wanted to pinch him and hug him, but he he kept away. Did you ever hear about? I heard that when he was younger, he was he was raped. Did you ever hear anything about that? No. Uh, yeah, I heard about it, but you know, I I took fifty percent of what he said. I mean, it's a good story, and it could be true, a good story. But I can't see anybody from where he was. Where, where is he from? Uh, Illinois. Yeah, someplace. Yeah. Anything out of New York is...